In today's episode, we're diving into the latest at Starbase as SpaceX gears up for Starship's fifth integrated flight test. Discover the status of Starship 30 and Super Heavy Booster 12, and critical upgrades added to the tower arms to guarantee a successful booster catch. We'll also cover the recent drama surrounding CNBC's controversial report on SpaceX, find out how the company responded, Elon Musk's fierce rebuttal, and the latest on the FAA's delayed public hearings. Plus, get the inside scoop on the progress of the second launch tower construction, including the mishap with the crane, and the efforts to decommission Starship 26. As Starship's fifth integrated flight test nears, major progress has been made at Starbase, prepping both Starship 30 and Super Heavy Booster 12 for the highly anticipated mission. Over the past month, Ship 30 has undergone substantial upgrades to address key vulnerabilities identified during previous flights. Notable improvements include reinforced heat tiles on the windward side, additional tiles installed on the flaps, and the rectification of hinge gaps that previously posed a risk of flap failure during re-entry. In addition to these structural enhancements, two of the Ship 30's Raptor engines have been replaced and rigorously tested to confirm their readiness for the mission. Simultaneously, the preparations for Super Heavy Booster 12 within the Mega Bay are advancing steadily toward completion. Both Ship 30 and Booster 12 will soon be rolled out to the launch site for the wet dress rehearsal, the final pre-launch test that involves loading the rocket with propellant and simulating a countdown to verify all systems are ready for flight. Elon Musk announced on August 10 that Flight 5 is anticipated within the next three weeks, which means SpaceX is aiming for a launch window in late August. However, the licensing process remains pending, as the FAA continues to review the booster catch plan thoroughly before granting authorization. Over the past four weeks, SpaceX teams have been diligently working on the tower arms, implementing upgrades and repairs to ensure a successful booster catch. They replaced many dampeners on the landing rail with enhanced versions to improve system reliability and made other significant upgrades. A new cushioning mechanism has been integrated into the tower arms to better absorb vibrations and mitigate shocks during the booster catch. This upgrade supplements the previously installed rubber pads, providing additional protection for both the booster and the tower structure from impact forces, thus ensuring smoother and safer operations while enhancing the system's reliability and longevity. In addition to these structural enhancements, SpaceX has rigorously tested various aspects of the launch tower arms over the past few weeks. Tests have covered the motion of the arms, the functionality of the landing rails, and the operation of the booster alignment push rods. The landing rails are designed to absorb and distribute the load of the descending booster, while the alignment push rods ensure precise orientation as the booster settles onto the arms. Accurate alignment is crucial for correctly positioning the booster on the launch mount for the next cycle. After completing the upgrades, the tower arms were lifted and positioned around test tank B14.1, which was placed on the launch mount. Then the arms underwent a series of movement exercises to verify the system's readiness ahead of the booster catch practice test. One of the key tests involved the first rapid movement of the right arm, following the actuator upgrades. The test tank, B14.1, is specifically designed to conduct the catch practice tests. Previously, in June, the test tank was used for controlled impact and landing rail compression tests to replicate the stresses that the launch tower arms, landing rails, and dampeners would endure during an actual booster catch attempt. The insights gained from tests in June likely informed the recent upgrades to the tower arms and the addition of the new cushioning mechanism. The upcoming Phase 2 of the booster catch simulation tests will validate the new upgrades the tower arms have received, ensuring the system is fully prepared for real-world booster recovery operations. Recently, CNBC reported allegations against SpaceX, claiming that the company had violated environmental regulations by releasing pollutants into or near bodies of water at its Starbase facility. These violations, highlighted by the Texas Commission on Environmental Quality and the Environmental Protection Agency, were tied to SpaceX's water deluge system, used during Starship launches and tests. Regulators claimed SpaceX bypassed the required permitting process, raising concerns about untreated wastewater discharge. Environmental experts have raised concerns that SpaceX has been allegedly violating wastewater regulations for years, possibly with the FAA's approval. Criticism has also been directed at SpaceX's 483-page permit application for lacking crucial details, such as discharge volumes, wastewater temperature, and specific release locations. Additionally, there are serious concerns about elevated mercury levels in the wastewater, which reportedly exceed water quality standards. In response, SpaceX issued a detailed statement on X, calling CNBC's story factually inaccurate, particularly in its portrayal of the water deluge system. 
The company clarified that the water deluge system uses clean, potable water, not exposed to industrial processes. They emphasized compliance with TCEQ conditions and that independent tests showed mercury levels far below EPA limits. Additionally, SpaceX noted that excess water from the system is captured in lined retention ponds to prevent groundwater contamination and highlighted the deluge system's importance for flight safety and protecting the surrounding area during launches. Following SpaceX's initial response, CNBC edited its article to include the company's clarifications, adding that SpaceX said regulators have told the company that it can continue with launch operations despite the violation notices. However, SpaceX again responded on X, stating that the updated report still contained inaccuracies. They acknowledged a typo in their permit application, but emphasized that all other data, including lab reports, showed mercury levels well below state and federal water quality standards. SpaceX clarified that the typo was corrected within 30 days, and TCEQ updated the application accordingly. Elon Musk further criticized the network, stating on X, CNBC are such liars. Meanwhile, the FAA has postponed a series of public hearings that were part of an environmental review related to SpaceX's plans to increase the number of Starship launches from its South Texas facility. These hearings were designed to collect public input on a draft environmental assessment that would allow SpaceX to conduct up to 25 Starship launches annually from the Starbase site. The timing of the FAA's postponement raised questions about its connection to the violations reported by CNBC, but the agency provided no clarification, stating only that they are seeking additional information from SpaceX before rescheduling. It remains uncertain how this delay will affect SpaceX's plans, particularly regarding the approval process for Flight 5 and future launches. Now, let's come back to the developments at Starbase. The construction of the second launch tower is advancing rapidly at the launch site. The crane used for stacking the initial six sections of the tower was reconfigured last week to extend its boom length for assembling the remaining sections. After reconfiguration, teams began raising the crane on August 9, but the operation was halted when the crane jib accidentally disconnected from its trolley. This incident damaged two hydraulic actuators of the crane, but, fortunately, did not result in any major accidents at the site. Teams then made thorough inspections of the damage and decided to bring the crane down to fix the issue. The actuators were later removed from the crane and replaced with new ones. The crane was successfully raised again and reached its operational height without further issues. After confirming the crane's operational status, the 7th and 8th sections of the tower were transported from the Sanchez site to the launch site. On Thursday morning, the 7th section was carefully lifted and placed atop the existing structure, where it was secured using heavy-duty nuts and bolts, welding, and various structural fastening equipment. The 8th section is scheduled to be stacked in the coming days. Meanwhile, preparations for the 9th and final section of the tower are underway at the Sanchez site, with its transport to the launch site expected soon. Additionally, the tower arms and carriage are also being prepared at the Sanchez site. However, there have been no recent updates on the status of the Starship Quick Disconnect arm. A methane header tank, which stores the methane required for the landing burn of a Starship, was spotted at the build site this past week. The label indicates that this is the header tank for Ship 34, the second Block 2 Starship. In a surprising development, Starship 26 was relocated from the Rocket Garden to Mega Bay 2 on Tuesday afternoon. Following this, the ship was positioned on a processing stand within the facility, where teams proceeded to remove all six of its engines. After removing all six Raptors, the ship was lifted onto a transport stand and moved back to the Rocket Garden. It looks like SpaceX is preparing to decommission the vehicle. For a detailed look at Ship 26, be sure to check out my previous video, the link is provided in the description. Now, let's discuss some of the latest updates from the world of science and technology. In a historic first for space exploration, SpaceX has announced plans to launch the FRAM-2 mission, which will send four private astronauts on a journey to explore Earth's polar regions from orbit. Scheduled for launch no earlier than late 2024, this mission will mark the first crewed spaceflight to traverse both the North and South Poles, offering an unprecedented view of our planet. The mission is named in honor of the Norwegian ship Fram, which played a pivotal role in early explorations of the Arctic and Antarctic. Commanding the mission will be Chun Wang, a 42-year-old entrepreneur and adventurer from Malta. Wang will be accompanied by a diverse international crew. Janicki Mickelson from Norway is the vehicle commander, Eric Phillips from Australia is the vehicle pilot, and Rabi Aragi from Germany is the mission specialist. Notably, this mission will be the first spaceflight experience for all four crewmembers. 
FRAM-2 will launch aboard a Falcon 9 rocket from Florida's space coast, sending the crew into a polar orbit at an altitude of 425 to 450 kilometers in a Crew Dragon capsule. This will mark the first time astronauts observe Earth from a polar orbit, which is inclined 90 degrees to the equator. Over the course of the 3 to 5 day mission, the crew will conduct scientific observations of Earth's polar regions through the Crew Dragon's cupola, a large observation window offering breathtaking views. Among their objectives will be the study of unusual atmospheric phenomena, such as the strong thermal emission velocity enhancement, a type of aurora that occurs at altitudes of approximately 400 to 500 kilometers. The mission will also focus on research into the physiological effects of spaceflight on the human body, including capturing the first ever X-ray images of a human in space. In the last four years, SpaceX has successfully completed 13 human spaceflight missions, safely transporting 50 crew members to and from Earth's orbit. FRAM-2 will be the company's sixth mission involving private astronauts, further cementing SpaceX's leadership in the burgeoning field of commercial space exploration. NASA's Office of Inspector General recently released a critical report highlighting significant quality control issues at Boeing's Midget Assembly Facility, where components for the Space Launch System rocket are manufactured. Boeing, a key contractor in NASA's SLS program, is responsible for producing essential parts of the rocket's core and upper stages, as well as the flight avionics systems. The OIG report, made public last week, highlights 71 corrective action requests issued by the Defense Contract Management Agency, which oversees Boeing's work on the SLS. This number is unusually high for a program at this stage of development, with 24 of these requests being classified as Level 2, indicating serious issues that cannot be immediately corrected. The OIG attributes many of these problems to a shortage of trained and experienced personnel at the Mitchell facility. Additionally, the report criticizes the management of the Exploration Upper Stage, or EUS, a crucial part of the Block 1 BSLS, which is set to replace the interim cryogenic upper stage used in the Block 1 configuration. Boeing's delivery of the EUS has been repeatedly delayed, with the original February 2021 deadline now pushed to April 2027. Boeing's response to these issues has also been found to be ineffective, particularly regarding recurrent quality control problems. To address these concerns, the OIG recommends implementing a comprehensive quality management training program for Boeing, imposing financial penalties for noncompliance with quality standards, and conducting a thorough cost overrun analysis on Boeing's EUS development contract. The issues at Boeing raise concerns not only about Boeing's ability to meet NASA's standards, but also about the potential impact on the timeline and success of upcoming Artemis missions. The OIG report is yet another setback for Boeing, which is already under scrutiny due to ongoing issues with its Starliner spacecraft. The spacecraft remains docked at the International Space Station for an extended period, while tests continue on its problematic reaction control thrusters. Thank you for tuning in for the latest science news and Starship updates. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button, leave a comment, and share it with your friends. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so you never miss an episode.